Hey guys, Kingpin here. Welcome to the next episode of Franchise Mode. If I sound different or the video looks different, it's because I completely changed the recording setup, hopefully for the better, but let me know in the comments. Sorry for the delay in uploads, I've been away with some personal stuff. Nothing bad happened, just nationals for college dodgeball, and exams coming up too, so I had to study. Luckily that's all over now, and I can put forward most of my attention back to uploading. It looks like our vets have been busy at work, though. We're a lot of the ways done with a majority of the animals in our zoo. It looks like the ringtail lemurs and elephants are among the only ones we haven't started yet. In case you missed the last episode, we made our Vanishing Giants exhibit, which is dedicated to elephants now and rhinos later. In a future episode, we'll add the rhinos. We don't have them in yet. Right now, it's just African elephants. But the exhibit turned out really well. It's going to be a thriving herd once they start breeding and we can get some more. I was really bummed I didn't catch it on camera, but off camera, while I was getting used to this new recording setup, our cappies actually had albino twins. I have no idea how rare this is. I thought you had to get specific breeding partners and have a mutation in their gene pool or something crazy, but to get not one but two of them? It's really cool. At the time of recording this video, there's five days left in the second community challenge. And what we have to do as the community is release four-star or better semi-aquatic animals. Now this isn't very hard for me in particular because pretty much all of the animals that we've made so far, or at least we have exhibits for, are semi-aquatic. That includes our cappies, our tapers, our sea lions, possibly flamingos since they spend a lot of time in water, but I'm not sure. Planet Zoo is pretty vague in the definition of semi-aquatic, but we know it means they can go in land and water. If the animal needs a ton of water in its exhibit, odds are it's semi-aquatic, and I'm pretty sure if it can deep dive like the cappies can, it's guaranteed to be semi-aquatic. This would include things like otters, beavers, and etc. The only issue of this is I don't really know how to get four-star or better animals. We have a few, but they seem to be ones we bought from the marketplace, not ones we bred ourselves. I don't know if it has to do with the genes, if it has to do with their rating, or what, but even a lot of our gold star rating ones are not four star or higher. If you guys could let me know how to do this in the comment section, that would be great, because I really want to contribute to this challenge. I forgot to mention it in the intro, but my apologies if the editing in this video is a little bit more simplified and the runtime doesn't end up being as long as I usually like to hit that 20-30 minute mark. I'm using a completely new recording setup and new editing software, so it's taking some time to get used to. Instead of taking another two or three days to master it, I figured I'd put out a more basic video today to keep you guys entertained. I like to keep a relatively consistent upload schedule, so I don't want to take a massive break in order to learn something new. I figured the best way to learn the thing that's new is to just do it. Luckily we found a good deal on that elephant though. It'll be a fine addition to the herd. With two females, that doubles our chance that our bull elephant's gonna breed. And hopefully we can get an elephant baby soon. That would spike up tourism to this zoo extremely well. Who doesn't like elephant babies? And look at that! As soon as I was talking about elephant babies, they decided to mate. I like how all the animals have a unique mating animation in this game. It's so cute. Elephants are so cool, I could watch them for days. It's crazy to me how intelligent they actually are. I think my favorite part about this game is probably how it focuses so much on education. Through research, each animal has five fun facts you can unlock in the Zoopedia, and education is second only to cleanliness on how important it is to affecting your zoo's rating. People often forget that zoos aren't necessarily only about entertainment in real life. A lot of the time, zoos are focused more on conservation and education, and entertainment is second. Animal education is obviously one of the main points of this series and this game, but I want to learn more about you guys. I think we're going to start a question of the day here on the channel, and this will be the first one. I want to know what some of your guys' favorite zoos are. Mine would have to be the Columbus Zoo in Ohio. I haven't really been to too many zoos outside of the Midwest, but the Columbus Zoo just has it all. There's not a single habitat there where I can say the animals look uncomfortable. They really go above and beyond on enrichment and care. I speak from experience. I used to work there. We have aquatic mammals, we have big mammals, we have various reptiles, and we have the fan favorite capybara. 
We even have some birds in our flamingos. There's one type of animal, however, we don't have, and I'm not talking about amphibians. We don't have any big cats in this zoo, but today that's going to change with the start of our North American habitat. Off camera, I designed a completely original fence. If you guys like it, I'll put it up in the workshop, but the entire point of the fence is so big cats can't climb over it. It has an overhang that goes on the interior, so they definitely can't get over. I made it green so it blends in with the foliage, too. Most big cats, probably besides lions, usually live in some forested area. All of them are ambush hunters. A few people have recently commented that they got the game solely because of my videos, and that really touched me. The same people have also been having a little bit of trouble making their own exhibits work, so today I'm going to explain habitat requirements before we go over our educational section about cougars. If you look in the bottom right section of the Zoopedia, it'll show you exactly what you need to make their exhibits like before you build them. For example, our cougars need 705 square meters of land. They don't need any water, and they don't need any climbing. However, they still like it. They just don't require it. It also shows you the grade and quality of the fence you need to keep them enclosed, and the temperature that they like. So before you make your exhibits, Try to cater them to the animal's needs. The Zoopedia is an invaluable resource in this game. Cougars are really interesting animals. They span all the way over to the west coast of the United States, and all the way down into South America, and even get into Florida, despite them not sharing any territory in between Florida and the west coast. Since cougars cover so much land, they go by a few different names. Cougars, obviously, but people also know them as panthers and pumas. Whenever somebody's talking about pumas, panthers, or cougars, usually they're talking about the same animal. Panther is sort of a complex term. Technically speaking, most big cats are panthers. This includes lions, tigers, jaguars, pumas themselves, and among others. Since cougars have such a vast territory, they're least concerned, not endangered in the slightest, which is good because they really help the ecosystems that they're in, because they can take down pretty large prey. This includes deer in the United States. Random fun fact, but deer actually cause a lot of property damage in the United States annually. Over a billion dollars, matter of fact. Sadly, deer also are responsible for a lot of car crashes, which can be extremely fatal in humans. So cougars actually can have the potential to save your life if they eat a deer. The proof behind this is if you look up the result of car crashes, on the west coast and in Florida, deer are actually among the lowest percentages in the country. Coincidentally, that's the same area as cougars live in the United States. Alright, the rough outline of the exhibit is about done. We gave them plenty of climbing space, we gave them some water to drink, and we gave them hard shelter but it looks like they can get out of here just a little bit. Cougars in this game can jump really far, just like in real life. It's a trait all big cats share. All we have to do now is just get some rocks up there. They shouldn't be able to jump that high. Most of their jumping is purely horizontal. Cougars are pretty shy in real life and in this game. They can get stressed easily, so we gave them a good area right around back behind their climbing zone so they can hide from the view of the guests. After we add plants and trees, this will be even more amplified. I realized upon recording that we didn't really talk about the other name cougars have. We went over panthers, cougars, and pumas, but they're also called mountain lions, which is why I built this exhibit where it is. Our North American pavilion in this zoo is going to start as a mountain and have all your mountain dwelling animals. Then it's going to devolve into the plains and then go into the wetlands, just like it would in real life. After that, we'll loop back around to where the elephants are and meet it with Africa. That doesn't have any real purpose, it's just so the guest can have easy access to the other side of the zoo without having to backtrack the entire thing. This time lapse is also going to be targeted at our new players. Remember to use the Zoopedia to pre-build your exhibits to the right dimensions, but after the animals are actually in your exhibits, you have to click on them and learn exactly what enrichment and plant life they like. If you were to just click enrichment or plant life without filtering it through the animal species you're trying, they might not like what you put in there. For example, 
if we were to put a beaver pool, which our elephants and beavers eventually will like, in this exhibit, they won't like it at all because that's not what they want. However, if we filter only a cougar's enrichment, we'll find that they like these pronghorn pinatas, they like their cardboard boxes, scratching posts, and a variety of other things. The same goes for the plants. We can't put a baobab tree for elephants inside of this cougar exhibit. Those are native to Africa, so the cougars which live in South and North America, in the New World, won't even know what they are and won't like it at all. It'll make them really stressed out and that'll bring protesters to the zoo. You have to keep the plant life similar to what they would have found in the wild. So if an animal is from North America, keep plants from North America. You can easily filter that. The biggest tip I have when placing plants in Planet Zoo is to have random rotation on. It makes it look far more natural and realistic. Random rotation can be found in the second tier of movement options. All you have to do is flick it from off to on. There's nothing more advanced you can do about it. All it does is just rotate the plants in a random degree when you place them, so they're not all facing the same direction. It doesn't sound like much, but trust me, it makes things look a lot better. Another tip I have for new players when decorating an exhibit is to mix up the type of plants that you use. Don't only use the same two plants in the entire exhibit. That's not realistic at all, and the animals won't appreciate that. Mix up the types of rocks you use, the types of trees, but don't overdo it. You don't want to have a hundred different kinds of plants, because that'll just destroy your complexity meter. You also want animals to have area to run around and breathe if they don't want to be in the middle of the forest. So just try to mix it up. Have a good variety. Variety is the most important thing you can have in this exhibit. You technically could do this manually, but if you place a bunch of buffalo grass or another low-bearing plant like this, you can easily just copy and paste all of them and place seven or eight of them at a time, or even more like we're doing now. Lastly, don't forget to add a few flowers and colorful plants to the exhibit. It's nice to be realistic, but at the same time, forests aren't just green. Plants also don't only have to be anchored to the ground. You can put cattails in water and vines hanging from rock formations. Try to spruce it up and add life everywhere to the exhibit. By far, the most important thing you can do when designing an exhibit, especially for a dangerous carnivore like a cougar, is make sure it can't escape. To do this, open your heat maps. The first one is traversable area. Pick your animal, in this case it would be one of our cougars, and it'll be blue. Click on it, and if you see those red circles, it means the animal can escape. Try to use your head and figure out where it can escape from. For example, in this case, the cougars can climb on the trees we placed. So to remedy that, we're just going to need to make the rock formations a little bit higher so they can't jump off the trees and get out. The easiest way to quickly expand rock formations and make things higher is to use the same trick we used on the buffalo grass. In this case, just don't forget to pause time so the cougars can't escape while you're doing it, but after you do that, just copy and paste a bunch of rocks, but then flip them around so it doesn't look like you copy and pasted them. If you accidentally copy and paste something you shouldn't have, you can just hit the minus button. It's really that easy. We don't want this bush, so just subtract it from the group. I can't tell if we caught that exhibit sign or not. It looks like we did, so we'll have to go back and subtract this as well. Easy. Now we just have the rocks that we want. If you accidentally subtract something that you needed, just go back and add it. After you did that, duplicate it from the menu, and now you can put it wherever you want. After you place it, you'll get to place another one immediately. You don't have to do the first step all over again. This looks a little bit robotic though, and a little bit out of a pattern. See how those bushes are equally spaced if we would place that one there? Don't be afraid to rotate it completely, and sink it into the ground or raise it. Now it looks completely natural, even though technically all three of those rock formations are the exact same. I learned how to do this actually from watching an in interview from Bungie, the developers of the original Halo trilogy. In one of their levels, matter of fact one of the most expansive levels in the game, called the Covenant, they used three rocks total. Coming from experience, this is one of the biggest and best levels in the game. It would probably take 30 minutes to complete and there's rocks everywhere. 
The fact that they only used three separate ones shows how creative you can actually be. If you expand the size of the rock, if you change the color of it, if you change the rotation of it, what axis it's sitting on, you can make the same rocks look really different. All you have to do is get creative. I think our exhibit's about done though. I think it turned out really nice. It's pretty small, but the cougars should be happy here. They have more than enough space and hopefully can have a couple of cubs soon. The idea of this video isn't necessarily to directly copy this exhibit, although if you guys want it in the workshop I can easily put it there, but you should be able to use the tips I provided in this video, like the plants and the rocks rotation wise, to make any exhibit how exactly you want it. I'm a big believer in tutorials as a learning curve in games like this. You're not going to start off and be able to make perfection from the start, but if you have a video with tips that you can use to make your own thing, That'll make you a better player in the long run. That being said, I think I'm going to call it for today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Kingpin out.